إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونثوب إليه من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده فجازاه الله عنا خير الجزاء أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هديه صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثتها وكل محدثة بدعة لا معلمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما يقول الله عز وجل في محكم كتابه بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر Well, and sisters, today's khutbah is entitled New Year Resolution and Al-Asr Paradigm. With the New Year 2022 starting, many people evoke the idea of a New Year's resolution. And we do well any time we form resolutions whether it's a new Hijri year, or it's a new Miladi year, or whether it's a question going to Hajj, or it's the start of Ramadan. A new year resolution or any other resolution in a day of the days of Allah, Yawmin Min Ayyamillah, is a good tradition in which a person resolves to change undesired habits and traits and behaviors to accomplish personal and collective goals or otherwise improve life. They say that all changes in society began with thoughts and ideas, which are, which are then translated to actions. And actions, when repeated consistently, they form character. And so building sound character is the route toward achieving a better society. But and sisters, today I want to f reflect with you about time and the attempt to manage time. Any attempt to change must be done with managing time. Since time is the essence of life. How we spend time makes all the difference between a life well lived or a life wasted. Allah stresses the importance of time in Al-Quran Al-Kareem in Surah Al-Asr. By the flight of time, humans are losers except those who cherish faith and do good works and exhort on one another for truth and exhort one another to practice patience. Well, sisters, we are in need to reconnect with Al-Quran in general and specifically with this chapter of Al-Asr. This surah provides a solid paradigm for revisiting our New Year resolution and the concept of time management. You know, when the Mu'addin calls for the prayer, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, it reminds us of the value of time. 
as it happens five times a day. When one of the Salaf, the righteous uh, uh, generation after the, the companion says, pray, and he said that as people are lining up for Salat, say pray as it could be the last prayer of your life. Prayer should thus serve as a stark reminder of the reality of life. For no one knows when his date of death will come. It is hidden from us for a reason. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to exercise vigilance at all times. When sisters, because of the importance of this surah, the companion, radhiallahu alayhim, they used to recite it for each other. So when they meet in any gathering, they will recite this surah before they shake hand goodbye. So they never separate before reciting this surah. This surah become a motto for them, a pledge of loyalty, of brotherhood, of sisterhood among the companion of the Prophet Sallallahu شعارا لهم في ملتقياتهم جاء في الحديث كان الرجلان من أصحاب رسول الله إذا التقيا لم يفترقا إلا أن يقرأ أحدهما على الآخر سورة العصر إلى آخرها ثم يسلم أحدهما على الآخر وقال الشافعي رضي الله عنه لو لم ينزل على الناس إلا هذه السورة لكفتهم there is no scholar, Imam Shafi'i, was reported to have said, if this was the only surah to have been revealed, it would have been sufficient. Also, it was reported that the companions used to tell each other, come on, let us believe in our Lord for an hour. Ta'alaw nu'minu bi rabbina sa'a. Then they recite Surah Al-Asr. So they had this gathering, this uh, get-together for the purpose of evoking the values of Surah Al-Asr. This behavior shows that the companion used to occupy themselves with the values of the Surah, Surah Al-Asr, when they get together. Compare that, the behavior of the, of the companion of the Prophet Wasallam with our gatherings today. Most people today spend countless hours excessively speaking about sport, news, business, politics, entertainment. And at best, if they talk about the deen, they are in dispute of minor fiqh issues. But only few of us adopt ways of the Sahaba, ways of Surat al-Asr. But sisters, why was the companion reciting this surah specifically? You know, some may say it is because of the barakah of Surah Al-Asr. But if it was for the barakah and the blessing, it would be more barakah to recite Surah Al-Fatiha, as it is required for every salat and every rakah. So it's not just because of the barakah that they recite in Surah Al-Asr. The scholars said that the choice of Surat Al-Asr is because it manifests the reasons for gathering. Why we get together? What is the link that brings us together is in Surat Al-Asr. The adherence, the loyalty, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, the unity is there in this Surah. Surat Al-Asr starts with Allah swearing by Al-Asr, Wal-Asr. As we talked in the previous khutbah, what duha, what tur, what make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the Arab, the Bedouin, heard Surat at tur when Allah say what tur, and he got so nervous and shaken, and he say, what happened, what did somebody do to push Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to swear by his creation? Who got our Lord mad to the point that he had to swear? Same thing in this surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Wal Asr. Why swearing by the flight of time? 
That is because time is the most important thing in our lives. Brothers and sisters, Imam uh, Hassan al-Basri has given a unique definition of who is the human being. Human being, say, he said, is but a few days, every, days go, every day goes, a part of him goes too. That's how he defined human being. He defined human being as this time that is lapsing every day. And every, di- every, t- every day, every time, every hour, every second, we are shorter uh, in, in time and we are shorter as a human being. These hours, these minutes, these seconds of our life will never come back. Once they leave us, they never come back. This time is progressing and cannot be stopped or reversed. This time is the most cherished thing we have and the most valuable asset we own. Now when you have an asset, how do you spend it? You have a choice. You could just uh, 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 be wasteful and just consuming or you could invest. The, The smart businessman they invest part of the, their wealth for the future. And the future is what matters, really. Humans are in need to understand this reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say that humans are at loss. As his life, this human being, is re- reduced every moment, every day pass, our life is reduced and we are ever closer to our death. When our time comes, we leave our houses and we wind up in the graveyard. And we go from freedom of movement to standing accountable to our Creator before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَوَا رَبِّكَ فَوَا رَبِّكَ لَنَسْأَلَنَّهُمْ أَجْمَعِينَ عَمَّا كَانُوا يَعْمَلُونَ By your Lord, we will question them all concerning what they have been doing. Who will be then successful in this questioning? There is no champion better than a person who have prepared good answers to all the questions that are awaiting us before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather than preparing well and seizing the fleeing time, people tend to blame Al-Asr. They curse Al-Asr at time. Oh, what is this time we live in? As if the time is to blame. This actually have caused the Prophet to say in the Qudsi Hadith, narrated by Abu Hurairah, do not curse time, for indeed Allah has stated, I am a dahar, that is a time. The days and the nights belong to me. So the people of Jahiliya time, then and now, keep cursing the fleeing time or a dahar. Imam Shafi'i said in a beautiful poetry about this phenomenon, نعيب زماننا والعيب فينا وما لزماننا عيب سوانا ونهجد الزمان بغير ذنب ولو نطق الزمان لنا هجانا وليس الذئب يأكل لحم ذئب ويأكل بعضنا بعضا عيانا We mark the time while in us is the deficiency There is no deficiency for our time except ourselves Brothers and sisters, as Dahr or the fleeing time or or Asr are innocent bystanders and we should not curse them. The fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by it shows the importance of time and the obligation to use it carefully. We spend so much time in wasteful chats, both electronically and physically, talks, arguments, and other vain activities. 
We should ask ourselves, how many new good habits have I acquired last year, 2021? I actually purposely engage my brothers and sisters when I see people arguing and talking in circles. How many books have you read last year? You'd be surprised if you hear people reading two, three books. And then the excuse is, oh, I'm reading electronically. If you don't read the books, you're not reading the books, electronically or physically. I mean, it's a shame. When I moved to North America 30 years ago, and I was taking the train in Washington, D.C., I look around, everybody's reading. If it's not a newspaper, it's a book. And I look around, who's not reading? Well, those who are going to be left behind. Ask yourself, how many bad habits have I shaken off last year? How many good habits have I acquired? Have I taught anybody a new thing? Have I practiced uh, the obligation of a da'wah, which is a farida on all of us? It's not a job of a sheikh to convey the good news of Islam. Have I partaken into good causes? Have I donated funds and time to non-profit work? Have I supported legitimate causes? Have I helped a brother or sister in their struggle, in their education, in their career? Have I done anything of value that is consistent of Surah Al-Asr? إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ وَتَوَاصَوْا بِالْحَقِّ well, sisters, the problem with time is that young people say, I got plenty of it. Old people say, I don't have enough. So we're both wrong there. We can't be waiting to see our grave and our time close to say, well, I need to scramble to catch up with it. So... I don't have a problem, actually. I was chatting with the, my brother who just gave the khutbah. I said, I'm going to speak about New Year resolution. He said, what? I said, yeah, that's what I'm going to speak about. It, don't get caught up on the bid'ah or this. Anytime you, you try to make yourself better, anchored in the teaching of the Quran, you are on the right. Don't worry. How they call it doesn't matter. Can we really control time? Of course not. Time is going. I mean, can you stop the freeze the, the clock? You can't. Time is not under your control. But we can control the event of life in this time. There are different type of events that happen in life. And we have control over them. Not all of them. If I'm born black or white, sick or uh, uh, perfectly shaped... That's not in my, my control. I did not choose to be born in a wealthy family or poor family in the West or in the East. Those are the few things, the 10% you don't control. But the 90% of the rest of it, we control. We can control the event of life and of time by setting up a, a personal mission statement for ourselves. And we spoke on this topic in the previous khutbah. We've got to define what is our mission in life. Clearly, personal. And we have to set smart goal, specific, measurable, tangible goals for our life. And for every year, for every month, for every week. The event of life are many. How do you prioritize? How do you decide I'm going to do this before this? The skill and the art of prioritization is something you could learn. See, the people who are interested in this field have divided the event of life in four types. Based on two dimensions. Just imagine a square, a four quadrant square. The dimension of these four squares are urgency and importance. So if you find yourself doing things that are important but not urgent most of the time, you are on the right track. You are a proactive person. You are a visionary and you are anchored in the future. But if you find yourself doing urgent things that are important all the time, then that's a problem. You're always 
in a mode of urgency. That means you never have time to think strategically about yourself and your future and your family. Because you're busy. I gotta pay the bills. I mean, it's due in two days. It's urgent and it's important. If I don't pay the bill, I lose the house. But the worst thing is to find yourself on things that are not important and urgent. You know, when the movie comes, it's starting now. So it's urgent. Is it really important? It's not important. So you cannot be putting yourself in this urgency. If the phone rings, if the message rings, the WhatsApp and Facebook and all that, you don't have to read it. You don't. It's urgent. It's like nagging you to look at it and to listen to it. But it's distracting you from what is important and not urgent. Investing on my education. Investing financially on myself and my family. You know, those are things that might not sound urgent, but they're important. Our goals must be consistent with our vision and mission and should be chosen based on these priorities. The priorities of those who are conscious of the hereafter are different than those who are not. Unfortunately, many people often go with the flow around them, oblivious of the fact that we will stand before Allah for the final reckoning. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وبعد. But the sisters, our priority should stem from a well thought and well designed life. And I'm using the word design like a designer. Using a design thinking, this is a modern process that is tested and works well. There are a lot of ideas that are called dysfunctional beliefs that are stopping us from achieving our goals in life, both in this worldly life and preparing ourselves for a hereafter. And where are the dysfunctional beliefs? See, if you hold an idea and you think it's the truth and the only truth, and you live through life 10, 20, 30, 40 years acting based on that dysfunctional belief that in fact is wrong, then obviously you're going to be making a lot of bad decisions. And so dysfunctional belief are belief that causes a person direct or indirect mental, emotional or physical harm and they're not aware of them. I always advise my students to question once in a while your beliefs that are held as true. And ask yourself, where did I get this idea? And what kind of harm is this idea causing me? You know? And, and there's a lot of those that are lingering, we're dragging with us and they're slowing us down. So once in a while, ask yourself, what is the source of this idea? Who taught me this? And you will find that your uh, 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 comrade in high school told you this idea 30 years ago. And you've lived your life through that paradigm. That guy has no business to give nobody's advice. So question your uh, ideas and your belief once in a while. It's okay to do that. You don't question Allah. Allah is the creator. You know he is the creator. And, and it's fine to actually go through that uh, path of meaning. But all ideas need to be questioned. I don't care where you got it from. If you cannot defend it today, with proof, then it doesn't matter where it's coming from, it has to be questioned because it's holding you back. We need to develop a life view that includes health, work, play, and love. And I picked this strategically. It is important that we assess this life departments continuously and make sure that we are balanced. When it comes to health, we need to plan for nurturing our mind, don't always think about the physical health. Our mind, our body, and our spirit. 
As we work on our mind and souls, we need to prioritize our learning by evoking the saying of the Prophet in his dua, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from knowledge that profits not and from heart that feels no reverence to you. And when it comes to work, let us participate in this human civilization, both in paid work and non-paid work, because not all work is paid. Work that fulfills the khilafa, the leadership, proper leadership on this earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects from us. When it comes to play, it's okay, yes, play. A time we can play and, and, and plan play, play for the pure goal of having some joy. When it comes to love, let us remember that love make the world go round. We need to give and we need to receive love. Love comes from affection, from community, from intimacy, from people like your parent, from people like your sibling, your spouses, your children, your friends. Love brings a sense of connection. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنَ الزُّوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ وَجْعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Lord, grant us joy in our spouses and children and make, uh, make us role models for those who are God-conscious. God but sisters, if we are successful in designing such life and putting together for it a dashboard that gives us a snapshot on how balanced is our life. You have to plan it. You have to have it in writing. And then check it up and see how the dashboard, are you, are you deficient in any of this department? Because if you are deficient in any of these areas, it will catch up with the other areas. The very short surah that we talked about today, Surah Al-Asr, outlines a complete system for human life based on the Islamic view, viewpoint. If you want to make a New Year resolution, this surah clearly and concisely define the basic concept of planning based on a faith in the context of its complexity and reality. Illa amanu. The word amanu, belief in its comprehensive meaning. And in Islam, we're not like those so-called murji'ah who say, you know, we just believe and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take care of us. That's not accepted in, in, in the core belief of, of Muslims. You believe and you follow the belief with al-amal, al-salih, the good deeds. And with reminding each other to be sticking with this truth, telling people about the truth, and you will be tested. If you are speaking the truth in any subject, in any area, you will be tested. And at that point, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command you to have a sabr. وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر قل قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وتولنا في من توليت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت إنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك وإنه لا يعز من عاديت ولا يذل من واليت تباركت ربنا وتعاليت اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما صليت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالم إنك حميد مجيد واقم الصلاة